Fill up the machine. You have to give the spokes a slight bend so they don't interfere with the rim. And this is an automated lacing machine. So the machine is presenting the nipple and threading it onto the spoke. Uh, all I have to do is know the proper lacing pattern and present the spoke to the machine. What's nice is we can actually set the tension for individual rounds. And we can create a pretty optimized tensioned wheel right off the machine. And then that'll help when we present it to the truing robot so that the truing robot spends less time working on it to get it within our specification. So, and so another thing is you're gonna see the wheel, the wheel press here. Before what we were using is the stabilizer handling machine. And what that was doing was actually causing more of a cycle time. It was at 180 to 200 seconds. And what uh, Chad, he, he realized that if we were to do it manually, that's going to reduce our cycle time significantly. So now our cycle time is anywhere from 130 to 150 seconds. Just by manually doing the press here rather than inside the shooting robot itself. So it's a wheel, but so it's automatically going four, 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 and then it knows you're going. It, it knows the it knows which holes to skip to for that round. Uh, I just have to know which spoke to grab. Right. Yep. But it, 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 it spins to the proper hole. Typically, the laser can all pace the truing robot very slightly. But before we started pressing here, we could lace for 40 minutes and then take a break because we'd, we'd have this whole chute all loaded up and be waiting on the machine. Yeah, most of our operators can build a wheel, you know, from this state to this state in about 80 seconds. You know, that's on average. So when they're really working hard, um, you know, a lot of them can get 70 seconds, you know, off this machine. So it's pretty efficient. So now we're gonna yeah. stress it. Yeah, so there's that's what I was talking about that helped us reduce our cycle time by instead of using it in the back of the That's just crazy. Here. Uh, awesome. Yeah. Uh so so you're are you talking about like uh, some kind of smoke pressure put on the drills? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. When does it get put on? It's at when they're actually filling, and you're actually gonna. They're gonna talk about that up there. Can you use a Teflon. Yeah, yeah, Teflon. So, so go ahead. Is this specific? I don't have a floor. No, we use 300 pounds of pressure pressure for each. Oh, yep. Um, another thing that I would like to show you guys too is. Uh, you guys are going to see, we're going to be going over and talking about the radar chart here in a second. So what this is actually doing, they can see where their tensions are at, and that's going to give them timely feedback to do any adjustments that they need to in that moment. Right. 